Hello guys, Sinful here. Today's video features four true scary stalker stories. I'll try to say that one five times fast. <laughs> this video features a dear friend of mine, Lord of Terror. I want you guys to be sure as soon as the video is over to subscribe to his channel. I will have the link in the description box below. I really want to help his channel grow and I know you guys will love his content. Everything he puts out and everything he produces is original material, guys. He writes a great deal of his own work, and then he uses his subscriber stories for the most part. Real special narrator. Give him some love and subscribe immediately. I feel like the two of us are going to be working closely for years to come. Without any further hesitation, let's begin. Have you ever seen those houses? You know, the ones you see in the movies. The suburb cutscenes. Green grass and colours all around. Clean streets. More bedrooms than you really need. An extra bathroom that you never use. I worked my entire life like a dog. To be able to move my wife and I into a place like that. And when I signed the contract, I was over the moon. Prouder than you can really imagine, little did I know that doing so would not just turn my life upside down, it would completely destroy me inside. I may as well have signed a contract with the devil himself. When our offer was accepted for our dream house, we were overjoyed. The circumstances for the previous occupant leaving were kind of strange. They left the house in the middle of the night, and they didn't come back. Nobody heard from them again, and the bank repossessed the house, and sold it to us. In these times of financial hardship, these sorts of things happen quite a lot, and we definitely didn't think anything of it. After about a week of moving into the house, we began noticing some pretty bizarre things. Some things that just made no sense at all. We would have things moved around our front and backyard in the middle of the night. At first it felt like we were imagining it, but it got more and more prominent as time went by. Sometimes at night you could hear the crunching of leaves and stones from all angles. Whenever we checked, there was nobody there. Just darkness at every corner. We have woodland surrounding our house. Beautiful trees all around us. An easy hiding spot for anyone with bad intentions. Whoever was doing this to us decided to take it to the next level. I woke up one morning to find a letter on the floor in my hallway that had been pushed through my letterbox. I opened it, and there was a caption saying, This is our house you are living in. We want it back, and we are watching both of you. My heart froze in my chest. What I thought was simple imagination were all a brutal reality. There is no worse feeling than having your paranoia confirmed. I genuinely had no idea who was doing this to us. I got the police involved. They found nothing. And this angered them even more. I got more and more letters through the letterbox at night. One said, You got the police involved. Do you want me to come in at night and pay you a visit? No police. I had no clue what to do. Where to turn. And sadly, Things only got worse. We woke up in the morning to find graffiti spray painted on the side of our house, saying things like, fuck off and leave now. There was no telling where or when this would end. We then began to receive photos of us in our garden and in our house, taken from the woodlands, pushed through our letterbox. Our privacy was being destroyed we applied to have CCTV installed 
and we have it now. But they have found new ways of torturing us. They have sent in letters to our places of work, letters in the mail. I've even had my tyres slashed when I've been out and about. My wife and I tracked down the previous owners. We thought that maybe it was them. Maybe they wanted their house back. We went to pay them a visit. And when we knocked on the door, a lady opened the door. And we explained who we were. Some of the first words out of this lady's mouth were, Are you getting the letters too? To this day we still have no idea how, who, or why. And when I put my head on the pillow at night, I know they are out there, somewhere in the woods, watching, always watching. Stalker from my window. I'm 15 now. I live in Idaho. And in the main city, it's pretty safe here, usually. This all happened a couple years ago, and I'm still creeped out by it. I was 13 and home alone, just hanging around with my dog Ziggy, watching some creepy pasta stuff, and actually some let's not meet stories. Everything was fine, but it got cold from the window being open, so I went to go close it. When I got to the window, I saw a man standing by the tree outside my house, smoking a cigarette. I thought maybe it was my mom's boyfriend. I yelled out, Neil? No response. Instead, the man walked off. I thought it was nothing and closed the window, called my mom, and told her what happened. She made me lock the doors and windows. I did. I went back upstairs and continued watching my videos but I forgot to lock my window. Fuck! I went to the window to lock it. When I moved the shades to lock the window, my heart sank. What I saw was so terrifying. A six foot six man with long blonde hair stood staring through my window, smiling. I jumped and quickly swatted the locks down and jumped back. He grinned at me evilly and he said, ah, don't you want to hang out, buddy? I freaked out and told him to go to hell before I called the cops. That was a bluff. I didn't have a phone. The only phone in the house was a home phone, and it's plugged into the wall. Those digital types, you know. Then the man pulls the home phone out of his pocket and told me, With what? This? I began to cry and hit the wall beside me because my house is split down the middle and shared with the neighbors who have their room directly beside mine. Shit, they're on vacation. Fuck! The man told me, I'm coming in, we can chat. Just then my mom pulled into the driveway and got out and yelled at the man as he fled from our yard. Her boyfriend ran after him, but he was too fast. He got away. I haven't seen him since and I still live in the same house. I'm still creeped the fuck out. I'll never forget his face. Twisted, evil, fucking insane. It made me want to punch him through the window or even claw my own eyes out. Needless to say, he's not coming back, it seems. So to the creepy window stalker, let's not meet, ever, again. Man at the airport. So this isn't my first time posting on here, but I hope this will be my last. This isn't as scary as most people's, but I think it was pretty unsettling. I work at the airport in my city in a small business, I usually enjoy working there, save for a few creeps that come with the job, but overall it's a fun experience. On weekends I usually close with one of my favorite co-workers. Because he's so cool and usually it's just us two, I usually bum a ride from him. This will matter later. So this story was about a month ago. It's a Saturday night and my co-worker and I finish locking up and we head out. In order to get employee parking, you have to walk through arrivals and into the basement area This will lead you to where you want to go to get your way outside. We were walking through arrivals when I noticed a man sitting on a bench, half covered by plants. Now, I wasn't a very observant child, so I overcompensate now as an adult. The man is plain, wears glasses, a beanie. He's around six foot tall and looks mixed race. He looks to be in his late 20s or early 30s. 
He has no baggage and no badge to state that he's an employee. I then notice the man is staring at me. It's the kind of stare that doesn't immediately make me think something's wrong, but I'm definitely a little on edge. As we pass him, I mention to my coworker that the man was staring at me. My coworker cracks a joke and doesn't take me seriously. It's at that point that we hit the escalators to get to the basement. I can hear someone get on the escalators behind us, but I don't look because the basement exit is commonly walked, especially during winter, and it's not uncommon for someone to be heading to it. The walk from arrivals to the employee parking is about a five minute walk. My coworker and I are cracking jokes about what we'd do in a fight. Now, for clarification, I'm female and my coworker is male. My coworker is only about two inches taller than me, and I'm 5'3. He weighs less than I do, so neither of us is pretty intimidating. As we are making jokes, I can hear the person behind us getting a bit closer. I slow down and my coworker does the same to let them pass, but the person seems as slow as we do. Now, I'm a little worried, but I act as if I'm perfectly fine to my coworker. The man from the bench was completely out of my mind, and because I can hear the footsteps behind us, I don't feel the need to turn around and see who it is. When we finally get to the employee parking, I'm pretty worried that the person behind us is a lot closer but I figure maybe it's just an employee who isn't aware of how creepy they are being. I deliberately take a path that leads closer to my coworker's car that not many people take because it's not a very popular area for people to park. My instinct that something is strange increases tenfold when the footsteps follow us through that path. All the while, I'm still cracking jokes to my coworker who's noticed my tension. The footsteps come unbearably close and I glance over my shoulder to see a man press close to us. As soon as we make eye contact, the man blinks at me, looks at my coworker as we're pretty close to his car, and he's still joking away. And then the man veers off into a totally different direction. It takes me a long moment before I recognize that it was a man sitting on the bench. I was creeped out, but it wasn't until the small details I pieced together later that I really felt uncomfortable and afraid. Firstly, it was the lack of badge that made me uncomfortable. As an airport employee, you're required to keep your badge visible at all times. The man clearly had no badge. Why would he follow us for five minutes to employee parking if he wasn't an employee? It was also the path I took that he followed us down. In all my time of walking to employee parking, I'd seen that path taken by other people only two times. I believe as soon as it became apparent that my coworker and I were riding together, and when I looked at him, that I think he realized he couldn't do anything without my coworker being present. When I called my mother to retail the tale, my mother agreed with me how odd it was. My mother had been a manager at the same place and used to walk it to employee parking. So when I told her the path we had taken, she agreed that the chances of the man having good intentions were very slim. She also reminded me that that was a popular method to kidnap people into sex trafficking, which didn't help my creeped out state. I'm your average paranoid 12 year old boy, but this experience definitely freaked me the fuck out, but I was lucky with how it turned out. Now, some background information you need to know. I live in a small town with almost no crime. I live on a dead end. So sometimes there are cars that park down there for no reason. This happened about two weeks ago. On this particular day, we were getting ready to leave for a Christmas party at my family's friend's house. My parents asked me to take out my small old chihuahua. I went out the side door which leads to our backyard. Suddenly my dog started barking loudly. Now, you can't see the dead end from the side of the house, so I assume nothing was there. I thought that there may have been a deer or something in the backyard that just spooked her out, but when I looked in the backyard, nothing was there. I told my dog to shut up and we went inside. About 15 minutes later, we proceed to our car to leave. Then out of nowhere, big circle lights appeared behind us from the dead end. It looked like a jeep was behind us. I thought nothing of this. Oh, maybe they were just taking a call or something and had to stop. I thought in my head. But as we got to the end of my road, 
the jeep started to slow down as we turned. When we were halfway down the next road, my brother and I saw the same light slowly coming our way. That was my first red flag warning. I told my family there may be a car following us. My dad told me that if the driver was following us, then the getting slower part was to try to trick us into believing that he wasn't following us, but he said it would be okay. We turned onto the next street, and then in the middle of the street, guess who was there? The Jeep. My heart sank. I had no idea why anyone would follow an innocent family on the way to a Christmas party. They're still following us, I yelled to my family as I was looking back at it. My dad sped up the car just enough to not get pulled over. We started to lose the car. We ended up on a choice of two roads. We chose the right one and went down the road. The jeep went on the left road. I sighed in relief. I don't know what that person's intentions were. They could have been actually following us and gave up, or my paranoia getting the best of me. I think that what my dog was barking at was the jeep. She could have saved my life by barking at whatever was there.